Hi everyone, welcome along to today's video. Yeah, radiators. You know, there's a lot of things that can be bad about them in the sense of they're in the wrong position, the wrong sizes and so forth. So today, I'm going to take a good look at them and just to show you some of the problems that you get when you're living in a normal house with central heating radiators and you wonder why your house isn't that warm. So let's take a look, shall we? I'm going to start with my living room here. As you can see, I have some fairly big windows in here. Uh, one's there and one at the far end. And they're old double glazing, so they're not very warm. You can feel the cool air coming in through those, but they're very expensive to renew because they're so large. So where's my radiator, you might be saying? Well, there it is. <laughs> yeah, behind a settee. And it's even got a nightmare clothing on it. You mustn't put damp washing on radiators. Deaf ears with Jan. Anyway, that's saying that, you're thinking now, not a lot of heat's getting in this room in this set either, here, is it? But in actual fact, it does warm your back. <laughs> but no, also what happens is obviously it's under a window and the cold air drops through the glass here, hits the warm air coming up off that double convector and circulates the room, keeping it nice and warm. So in actual fact, although it's blocked by a city, it's still lovely and warm in this room. Now you might say, why don't you get rid of that rad there and have something on the wall, this side wall here for instance, could get one of those column rads up the wall. Well, they're one of those radiators you keep well away from in my book. They look great. I've fitted many in people's houses in the past and they look lovely but come the winter time they start complaining that the room is a lot colder than it used to be with one of these and, and that is because obviously it's on a wall, it's a tall long thin thing and it just kind of eats the ceiling above it really. <laughs> Now it does give out the kilowatts of heat but in the wrong places in corners of rooms you know you wouldn't want that red on say this wall here because this is an outside wall and also that this outside wall being in this old house uh, would drag a lot of the heat back out through the walls. Also another no-no is too long uh, curtains. Now ideally they should just sit above that red there above the window when they're drawn but if you look at these you know they're, they're too low they've covered the radiator there look you know so once night time comes you draw those curtains uh, all the is then trapped behind this long curtain and is going up 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 and up and up and it, it might just emit itself over the top of the ceiling there but it will just stay there it won't convect anywhere so you really reduce the heat output with drapes that are too long like we've got here but Jan has her thoughts her ideas and what we do now is we we don't leave the heating on when the drapes are closed so we will turn the drapes off turn the drapes off <laughs> we will shut the curtains only when the heating is off that's when we light the real fire that we got down here which takes over in the evening because it's much cosier much better lovely warmth from one of those now this room is very important because there's my room stat which is regulating the temperature of my heating. So this room has got the bypass rad in it uh, which has got two kind of fixed valves in it you can't turn uh, which are permanently open to allow the heating circuit to run if all the thermostatic rad valves turned off you see. So what's happening with this room? Well it's, this is my hall and you can see the stairs going up. Where's the radiator? Oh yes there it is tucked behind this cupboard. <laughs> and obviously it's, it's on an inner wall so it doesn't do too much but at least the wall doesn't suck any of the heat into it because it's an inside wall but obviously you know this cupboard and and this is it this is normal houses and this is how we live we like to have our things and uh, you know Jan wants a cupboard there and, and and that's it and there's nowhere else for it to go so consequently um, the, probably the reading in the hall has to be a bit higher that, that red has to go a bit harder working to get that stat to turn off at the right temperatures and so forth um, admittedly we have got it about right now I've sorted it out over the time and adjusted it and done all the balancing and system things you know that we always have to do system balancing don't we because there's our front door right there so now into the bathroom now most of you may have had fitted towel rails in the past and you've had a radiator before and I bet you're wondering why is it so much colder now in this bathroom um, it should be the same BTU output but it's a lot colder and why because 
there's our towel rail and what's it got on it? Well, what they're meant to do, have a towel on it. <laughs> so, obviously what's going to happen, uh, a lot of the heat is uh, not going to enter your bathroom. Here's my solution to a warm bathroom and a towel rail. Yes, there's a double convector radiator in here to keep this bathroom warm. You don't want to come out of a nice hot shower into a cold bathroom. Nothing worse is there. So this keeps us toasty warm in here. Now one other thing about this double radiator in the bathroom is that it's actually on an outside wall. Oh dear, yeah, because there's a window there. The toilet is there, so it couldn't go there. There's a window there but I couldn't get it under there either so it's on this bit of outside wall in between two windows not ideal so when it's on an outside wall especially a whole old house like this one uh, it, the heat tends to get sucked into the brickwork so this is the time you get the insulating material like we've got there it's a proper foil for reflecting the heat back into the room it's not just to be a baker foil you can get some really good stuff out there now at the moment get it behind the radiator and get it so it at least reflects as much the heat back into the room as you can so any radiators you've got that are on outside walls that we say well inside your house but an outside wall of your house remember that the heat is being sucked away it's a great idea to get this fall down we, we know it's quite a difference once we put that fall down there in the heat in this bathroom so another little tip so to that end i have that and as i come around my bathroom you'll see that I, that towel rail is up there for putting towels on yeah keep them nice and dry i know it's above a bath it seems a rather strange place to have it but there is a reason for that because in this cupboard here there used to be a hot water cylinder because I had an F&E system at one time. Now the hot water cylinder's gone and Jan said, well, what are we going to do about an airing cupboard now because I've got nowhere to dry the clothes out in and air them out. So I said, hmm, put some thought to it and come up with this. My simple idea was to do this. Another towel rail in there, which is used for drying clothes. It also puts a lot of heat into here. And we have racks here for our clothes, as you can see, socks and stuff air in there, and also up there, airing it dries everything out a beauty. You actually only need to put stuff in here for one day, and it's all dry and lovely. So I've left those clothes in there just to show you, well, my socks mainly. <laughs> now, as you can see, the pipes come up, this one that goes through the wall here and straight into this one here. Now, why am I doing that, you say? Because we also want the tower rails to be warm in the summertime, don't we? Uh, just to do the same thing, air our clothes out uh, on wet, rainy days. And to that end, um, I put a electric stat in this bottom radiator here. Uh, I know it's unplugged at the moment, you can see it hanging there. But it warms this one up, and because I've teed it up into this one here, it heats this one up as well. So for a 250 watt <laughs> element in this one radiator with one towel rail, it actually heats both towel rails in the summertime and keeps the air and cupboard going usable and keeps this one here usable too one thing else you'll notice you've got a dehumidifier here in the hall so if we do get any dampness at all we have this run it's in the middle of the house uh, to keep those humidity levels low which is vital to make sure your radiators are running at their maximum efficiency can't stress that enough so if we do get any steam in the bathroom i open the door after i've opened the windows if i can stand the cold and obviously this thing takes care of the damp air this rad here then in the bedroom massive double convector it's quite a big size in this room and it again is under the windows they're older windows. I know older houses always did have rads under windows. It's a traditional place to put them, say, to warm up that cold air coming in and cause a convection going around the room. But these days, not so important in modern houses to have them under windows because you've got triple glazing and so forth now. So it's not so necessary anymore to have them there. So if you live in a newish house, you can put your radiators anywhere you like, even on an outside wall. Uh, we've got no worries at all because the insulation in the walls in these modern houses is absolutely fantastic so there is that good thing about them but yeah as far as it goes this one again big double it's a biggish room as you can see going through there and it needs that amount of heat output i have to say this is probably one of the coldest rooms in the house 
and also because it's the last radiator on the system and the last rad on the system is always the one this is the one that's going to be the coolest of them all and this is why balancing your system is so important okay it's something I can't stress enough about balancing the radios I've got lots of videos on them I'll put you just one up now above my head for you to look at if you've not done system balancing right so now's the time to have a little look around your home and walk around and see what obstacles and things are in front of your radiators whether on outside walls if you've got those column rads um, I know you've probably lost a lot of your heat if you had a double convector before you had them fitted you can always go back to that but to be honest when the temperature is not quite as cold as it is now say 10 odd degrees above they're quite okay uh, they can deal it all right I mean the thing is you add up the BTU output for those column rads and you get them the same as the rad that you had you think you'd be getting exactly the same temperature in that room but it doesn't equate like that those column rads the heat seems to go straight up into the ceiling and heat the air directly above them and that also the problem because these rads often end up in corners of the room you may have a window here and two walls and then you have two of those columns put up each side of the wall well they're in corners they're not going to work very effectively so you may have the same heat output as your old convector but it's not delivering it around the room also if you live in an old, old house get it right out an old house and you've got any radiators that are on outside walls then do put some liner behind there get some foil behind the back of there there is some proper lovely heat and reflecting foil available and you can get that back behind the back of them radiators there and, and really stop that heat from going back into the wall and being resorbed up being sucked if you like through the wall and uh, being drawn out by the cold air especially in old places like where I'm living so just another little tip but obviously the balancing is the other one as well make sure uh, uh, you balance your system out properly and that bypass rad it's probably in the hall with the stat on the wall there which is doing all the controlling really needs to be clear really and uh, not have something that I've got a cupboard in front of it probably the worst example of the lot <laughs> yeah well, you can't argue with the wife can you that's what she wants that's what she wants a cupboard it's got to go there anyway that's about it those are just simple things to do and look around and make sure that everything tickety boo make sure there's no air in your radiators as well do that often as you can say once a month or two they do get air in them and that stops them working properly as well so something else to make sure you check as well other than that though uh, oh, apart from turning off radiators in rooms you don't ever use okay that's another last one make sure you turn those off if they're dead rooms you've got a four bedroom house and there's just you and the wife living there and you only live in one, one of those bedrooms you could turn the other three off and save uh, heat their money you know heating up rooms that you don't want to go in I mean that's another thing whatever those rooms might be if you don't use them then turn the rads off in there and maximize heat on the others all right that's about it though a quick refusal through radiators I'm sure you'll get back to me with what you do uh, be interested to hear so that's about it all my stuff in the go Derrick and 33 thanks for watching guys bye bye